you've been doing this since you were three years old or something, is that right? For a while, a number of years. More than yeah, a majority of my life. The most of your life, yeah. yeah. So more than half your life. And how old are you now? So I'm 22. You're getting old. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you, it's just <laughs> downhill from 22. So what'd you major in, in college? Majored in business and technology, and then minored, they call it a concentration, but I minored in information systems and marketing. So you were halfway there, given what you've been doing since childhood. Yeah, it's tied into a lot of what I do now. So you're into gadgets? Yeah, into all kinds of tech. I got into cameras and I got into all the tech around me. And then this sort of merged into making videos about the tech. On a YouTube channel that's a hugely popular place for people to go. Right, and it didn't start that way. It started as just me making videos for like myself just to have that exist somewhere. Uh, and then slowly people started to discover it and then it sort of grew from that. Doesn't this cost money? To, to review a gadget, you gotta own the gadget. I was in school, so I was, I was using a laptop for school, so I reviewed the laptop. And I reviewed a bunch of free software on the laptop. Okay. So it was a bunch of things I already had. So not only gadgets, but software that might go on the gadget. And that's how it started. And then people who wanted to see, should I get this software or not, would find it. And then I started reviewing paid things that I bought, maybe the cooler for the laptop. That's the kind of stuff that got, got you off the ground. And then you sort of proceed to, to check out more elaborate or extravagant things. And then people come to depend on you. A little bit, a little bit, yeah. Especially I'm not buying it unless Mark is. When it's something you use as daily as like a smartphone, for example, that's mm -hmm. the kind of thing you do actually put a lot of research into and watch a whole bunch of videos on before you actually buy it. So when did you realize you started having a following? Because you don't exist on, yeah. in this world unless people care who you are. Yeah, a lot of the early videos were just for uh, people buying this one laptop. So it wasn't necessarily a lot of people watching. One of the, the turning points is a video I did about a web browser when Safari by Apple came to Windows. I made a video about that, woke up the next morning and I had a couple of thousand views from people who weren't subscribed. And that was kind of a light bulb moment, like, oh, people actually kind of care about this timely information. And, and by then you had just turned five years old. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was probably about 15, okay. so I'll give myself Same that. Same difference. <laughs> Okay, so now you're like 15, uh -huh. and now you got thousands of views on your review. And then I, I reviewed little things like a webcam or a keyboard, things that I bought for my laptop. Then I went to college, and I started to get into you know cameras, and uh, bought a different laptop, and it was sort of like a rolling snowball. And I've noticed on the internet, if you put out an opinion, people are, it's like their job to argue your opinion. Often, yeah. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, how does what you say settle upon this, this torrid landscape of people's strongly held views? Because it's a review, a lot of what I do is at least try to stay consistent in my opinion. So even if you disagree with something that I say, maybe I, I say something like, oh, I like this phone's display because it's really saturated and punchy. And maybe you don't like that. You'll disagree with that. But at least in the next couple of phone reviews, when I say I like the display, you already know that you won't like the display for the same reasons that I do. So if it's consistent across a whole bunch of videos, then even if you disagree, you can learn from it. That's actually a profound lesson when following anyone. So what you're saying is people can accurately calibrate you right. to know when they're going to agree with you and when they're not. And that's useful no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, if a person's all over the place, you can't even, you don't know. And if you flip-flop, then they'll call you out even more. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, have you ever had complaints from the businesses themselves who put out the product? I get the can we follow up on that opinion sort of question oh. where, but often it's, a, it's in good nature because they actually want to improve their product. So if I have a criticism about something, they'll reach out and try to figure out what I don't like and they try to make it better, whether it's a software update or the next version of the product. So that actually turns out to work in a positive way. So you are shaping the future of manufacturing of a gadgets. A little bit, yeah. I feel like all of us reviewers have some so I'm taking that. Don't yeah. be saying all of us. You got the, you demand. Well, we all say things <laughs> that they might not like, but they don't have to reply to everyone. You are born 1994? 93. 93, December. okay. You've only really ever known the internet as a thing in your life, rather than having to have transitioned from walking to the library to get information and data. The internet is part of our life and always has been in a way that other generations exist alongside the internet and may go over and use it once in a while. Everything we do now, whether it's communication or sharing anything with anyone, whether it's someone I know or just posting something for the world, all of it goes through the internet. The convenience stuff, like I said, where a normal going to work routine would have no internet involved in it in 1990. Today, it's relying upon Google Maps and, and my alarm clock on my phone and everything telling me when to wake up and when to leave and how to get there. So in that way, I do think we are 
completely tu tuned into the internet in a way that's not the same as any other generation. Yeah. But can I say, it's not that so much you're tuned into the internet, the internet's tuned into you. That, that also is true. Do you have and an I, identity outside of how you are represented on the internet? It's almost like a pair of identities where you, you have your social life, but you have your social media life as well. And sometimes they're different. You'd be surprised how different they are with a single person having an online life versus an offline life. How about, okay, how close are the two for you? For me, I'm the same person. We'll be the judge. Easy. We'll be the judge. I mean, you can you can look it up. I'm out there. It's all the same. What about the eternity of the internet? The picture of you dancing on a table, drunk at a party, right. and now you're applying for a job. Yeah. So, I'm Father Time here, and I'm your grandfather. Yeah. And I say, in my day, you didn't give anybody any information right. at all. Now, you are putting all this information that I previously held secret, you say, here it is. Yeah. Here's my age, where I'm born, what schools I went to, who my friend circles are, it's all on, on the internet. So, that's not even private. Yeah. And you're making it not private. I think people want to be able to control what shows up or not. A picture that someone else uploads that has you in it, you don't really have control over that, but you still have control over everything that you post. That's the difference. So you can at least prune that. What would you say has changed most since you were 15? I'll give two things. One, displays have impressed me a lot. and The quality and resolution. The quality, the crispness. detail, the crispiness, all that stuff. And also more recently, cameras. Cameras in smartphones, cameras in laptops, the, the front-facing cameras. But especially in smartphones, we've gotten a lot better. But the number one thing I'd say is the displays. How about handheld? What, 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 because for, the, for most of us, we're not thinking, gee, there's 20 things I wish they would invent and they haven't yet because they're ahead of me at every step. Can you list some things that you know the rest of us can't live without and we don't know it yet? One of the things that I look forward to that I don't necessarily see up to snuff yet is battery life. On a mobile, a mobile phone, we never really had like a week or two week long battery life. If you took your phone out of your pocket five years ago, it was dead by the end of the day. Often two days maybe, if you're lucky. Today, your high-end phones are still dead by the end of one day, charged every night. If battery technology can get to a point where physics will let you go for a week or two. And of course, battery technology is the most antiquated thing in a phone. It's straight chemistry. It's, it's straight chemistry from the 19th century. Yeah. So, so that's the thing. That's that, lagging way behind exactly. other advances in the phone. Sure. And in fact, correct me if I'm wrong, most of why anything is lasting longer at all is not so much because we're making better batteries, but because the power consumption has been dropping. Efficiency is one of the most important factors to battery life in the display, in the electronics inside, and all that stuff. That's the reason the battery life is any good. So, so batteries. Yeah. All right, so what, what next? What do you think should be invented that hasn't yet? That's like the golden question. If I knew, the, I, if I, knew I couldn't <laughs> tell you. I wouldn't even know. Wait, so you don't know what it is you can't live without yet? My job is to look at what these really high-end innovators are coming out with and critique it. And it's, it's going to be awesome and it's going to be new and it's going to be fantastic when it's efficient and, and available for everyone. But when it first comes out, us early adopters look at it and talk about the goods and the bads and I feel like that moves it forward. Maybe these companies, Apple and Microsoft, maybe they've got a little branch called, what does Marquez want? <laughs> That's like the, a, a yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we can make him happy. <laughs> In a lab behind like a red and black door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a secret door yeah. to try to make you happy for what the next thing is. So we've crossed certain thresholds of d device innovation. Yeah. Uh, Apple might use the term retina display to describe a display where the pixel density is so great that your eye cannot discern individual pixels. Pretty much every phone has a retina display at this point, where five years ago that was not the case. And even the photos you take with the cameras getting so detailed and such high resolution that, again, the type of images you can take out of a camera on your smartphone are often better than something you'd get from a dedicated camera like seven, eight years ago. See, back in the day, you'd take a picture in your camera and it would have to stay in there until you finish the entire roll. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, in history books will tell Sounds you Sounds inconvenient. <laughs> you finish the whole roll and you forget what the first few pictures were. Oh. You finally finish the roll and then you walk it to a place and they hold it for a week and then you come back and then, and then you're reminded of the photos. Then you're reminded of the photos. <laughs>